Ben. What's going on, savages? How are we? Welcome back for another episode of the Savage Snowflake Podcast with me, Jeff Leach, your friend, your confidant, your teacher, your diligent student, the guy who comes over and is like, hey man, listen, could you keep it down? It's two in the morning. I'd really appreciate it if you didn't play the music so loud. You're like, dude, it wasn't even music. I was making love to my beautiful wife. Well, then let me watch at least. That's the guy that I want to be to you. And you guys are being the best people you can be for me as well. In fact, we've got some new patrons. Thank you very much to James Gaps, a brand new patron. If you haven't supported the podcast yet, you can do so for as little as $1 a month over at Patreon. That's P A T R E O N dot com slash savage snowflake thank you very much as well to dan lloyd who has become a savage with a 50 dollar a month donation to the podcast i'm going to thank him again at the end of the episode but thank you dan there he is there's a little picture of him i've drawn him as a centaur because he is a powerful majestic mythical being now in my life and i love him very much so i appreciate you guys for supporting us also thank you very much to our sponsors our brand new sponsors cbdeeper.com now if like me you are a fan of vaping you are a fan of uh, CBD products, I find it helps me with anxiety, helps me with my depression if I'm feeling a little bit low or maybe a little bit sore or a little bit depressed or a little bit anxious. I pick up a CBD vape and I have a couple of little puffs gives me a sense of well-being, makes me feel nice. Now, it doesn't necessarily, I'm not going to say it's going to cure any illnesses you have. That is not proven to happen. However, it is proven to make people feel a lot better about their day-to-day existence. Now, CBD Bar, this is a uh, lovely little family-run business. All of their vapes come with 50-plus percent CBD in every cartridge. Bear in mind, the industry standard is about a third of that amount. On top of that, they come in different flavors. You've got Tangi OG, Fruity Pebbles, Sour Diesel, Blue Dream, and Lemon Berry. And you can also get it in a natural flavor, which means no flavor at all. No terpenes added. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Oh, no, Jeff, I heard about some vapes hurting people on the East Coast a few months back. You're correct. Six people died from vaping off-market brands at the end of last year, but also 23 people died from uh, vending machines falling on them last year. You tell me what's the bigger killer. On top of that, every single one of CBDPA's vapes has been tested in a laboratory by Canna Safe, uh, uh, one of the most widely recognized uh, laboratory testing units, and, uh, and they've tested for vitamin E, which is what was causing the problems for people. There is no trace of vitamin E in any of these products. They also test for heavy metals and pesticides. I can guarantee that every single one of these vapes is using 100% natural homegrown hemp. That's correct. Nothing in there except for hemp oil and a lovely little bit of flavoring that's been tested for heavy metals, pesticides, and vitamin E. So it's very safe to use, very good for you, and it will make you feel lovely. Now, on top of that, their prices uh, can be not be beaten online. If you go and check it out, CBDEPA, that's C-B-D-E-E-P-E-R.com. Check out their prices on there, $15.99 for the half grams and $25.99 for the full grams. And on top of that, if you use code SAVAGE, S-A-V-A-G-E. Code SAVAGE. You get 10% off every single order. They ship out to 47 states everywhere that it's legal to sell CBD. Make sure you check them out. CBD per. Thank you very much for the sponsorship. Support this podcast by supporting our wonderful sponsors and enjoy your vaping experience. Right. Joining me today is actor, writer, producer, director. He's also authored his own books. It's Mr. Stephen Marcus, who uh, I know from the UK, we did a movie together, didn't we? We did. Yonks ago. What was it? Uh, what was it called? Two, two, two days, days, days in the smoke. smoke. Wow, it was. It really changed your life. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was it called? I got oh, no idea. It was fun though. It was. I mean, it was for me. It was great. It was a friend of mine that came to me with it. He wrote it. Darren, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then and Ben was directing it. Absolutely. They were uh, sort of a double team, weren't they? Yeah. Double producers, double, double directors, double writers. Double, on the double everything, actually. Double everything. I'm still sore from that. There you go. Well, you say you were sore. I had a character in the, uh, in the movie where um, I had a dildo inserted into my anus <laughs> did, in one yes. scene. So I think of the two of us, I probably came out that a little bit more sore and raw than you did. You got, to, <laughs> you got to play what I think had defined some of the earlier roles in your career, which mm. is which is... The big tough East End gangster. That was your. That was your. That, that's what I have been known to do occasionally. Yes. And now that I've talked to you for longer than five minutes, I'm aware that that is not who you are. No. You're a lovey. I am. You're a theatrical man. I am. Actually, you're, actually, you're a, I am a bit of a lovey sometimes. Yeah. I've done a bit of Shakespeare. You know. Yeah. You're a sweet. You're, pu- you're, you're a sweet a, papa bear. You're yeah, not, yeah. You're not an aggressive lout, no, are you? Not really. No. I used to be. I, I get. I, I, I have anger trouble. Oh, do you? Sometimes, yeah, particularly driving. Me too. That's that's that. You know what that is though. That's the that's British, Los Angeles. The, that's <laughs> Los Angeles. Everyone in Los Angeles drives in an incredibly how they operate their day to day life, which is incredibly yeah. selfish. 
They don't know what a turn signal is. And they uh, they don't fucking look anywhere yeah. when they when they when they're driving around. But I also think that's a very British thing to get annoyed about the lack of just simple common sense. Uh, yeah, I think. But I have a friend uh, from Oklahoma, right? Actor, who yeah, yeah. tells me that he could never be like an Uber driver because yeah. he just gets so annoyed. Oh yeah, yeah, no, so I, annoyed. I've jumped out of my car. On a number of occasions, yeah, and I've got oh, to I've stop. I've never done that. Oh, well, there you go. I've shouted abuse at people and then thought, that person might have a gun, I better drive away. Quickly. Well, there you go. That's what I got told by one of my friends. I actually jumped out of my car. I've mm. told this story on the podcast before, actually. Like, a guy, you know, came out of a side road, you know, stopped. I had to slow down because he was in the middle of the road, and I gave him yeah. a little polite, like, toot toot, just like, can you back up so I can go? I was on the main road. And he, like, did it really slowly. And as I went past, he gave me the finger. So I slammed on my brakes in front of his car, got out of the middle of the roads, put my hazard lights on, left my door open. This was in the middle of Hollywood as well. And I just walked straight up to the side of the door and started shouting. And went, just because you got a fucking neck tattoo doesn't make you fucking tough. Get out of your car, cunt. And he um, he didn't. He, uh, he sat there and took the torrent of abuse. And then his, you know, big fake lip girlfriend next to him was like, oh, my God, why are you so angry? And I was like, because your boyfriend's an ignorant cunt. <laughs> did he have a... Oh, yeah, he did, didn't, didn't have a gun. Oh, I, well, I was... Fortunately, t- otherwise I'd be fucking dead now, Mark. Well, one, of the, <laughs> one of the things I'm, I'm doing, I do to make a living when I'm not acting here at the moment, is uh, I drive Uber. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I picked up a guy a while ago, a uh, Russian bloke, and he looked like... He, he was hard. You know, yeah, he looked yeah, like yeah, he'd be... Yeah, and yeah. he's like, you're lying from Russia. Stephen, I you like don't. very much movies. I take you away. Give you one right fisting. Oh, yeah. Little, you know, oh, yeah? It was yeah. that kind of ride, was it? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been uh, if I'd have played my cards right. There you no. go. And, um, but he told me a story, similar story to yours. Yeah, he yeah, he yeah. lost his rag uh, at a driver and he stomped it, stopped on his, in front of him, and walked, walked up the car having a shout and shout and shout. And the guy sitting in the car was just going, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Pulls up his shirt. Yeah. And he's got a nice gun tucked into his waistband. Yeah. And, he, and he's like, right, sorry. Thank you. I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, man. You don't. Yeah. You can't fuck about out here. I got told by my American buddies like you're lucky that because that's happened a couple of times. Yeah. Not for a long time. Now, I mean, that was a good almost a year ago. The last time that happened. But they, they, you know, they say like in America, don't do that shit because people will just reach over to their gun glove compartment and pull out a gun and shoot you and just say it was self defense. He was threatening me through my. Yeah. And I mean, the guy wouldn't have been wrong because I was jabbing his neck. Yeah. It I was like, like yeah, yeah. through the window going you fucking neck tattoos. But also a six foot four. Like if you, you know what it is? Is I ride a motorcycle, right? Yeah, me too. Um, and so, right there you go. So as a, as a motorcyclist, when I, even when I'm in my car, mm. I'm very aware. I do shoulder checks when I'm moving yeah. lanes. I do stuff like that. And I went the way that this guy was driving. I was thinking, if I was on my motorcycle coming along at reasonable speed down that road, legal speed but yeah. reasonable speed, I would be fucking dead. I might be go. I, I go over the front of his car. Yeah. You know, my bike's gonna like. I, there's no way I'm gonna be able to maneuver out of that or slam on the brakes like I can in a car. Yeah, yeah. And that's what makes me so angry. And I, I feel like I have this vigilanteism that makes me go, I've got to teach him what right from wrong. But it doesn't work, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. And you're absolutely right. They use that. They, I, 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 I've been driving for 30 fucking years or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. I know better than you do. Yeah, yeah. And you're an idiot and you're from Los Angeles, so it makes you an even more of an idiot. Yeah. By the way, I love Los Angeles, you know. So. Me too. That, Real that ones, yeah, yeah, Los, Los Angelinos, yeah, Los, Los Angelinos, yeah, Los Angelinos, or so. aliens, as I like to call them, aliens, aliens. I like that. Uh, but <laughs> I do love, I love it. I love America, and I love all that. But like anywhere, it has its problems. And well, we're British, have so we have drivers to, have their problems. Yeah, we got to keep up the pretense that we're all patronising yeah, exactly. bastards, don't yes. we? Yes, we, we we invented the world. Yeah, and therefore. You lot don't know what the fuck you're doing. We do. We systematically colonized yeah. everywhere, fucked every country up, oh, and we then did. had to give it all back because <laughs> we, we, we were like, sorry. And, and we even fucked up our own country now. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do, you, like, do you look at England now and just think, oh, I should have stuck around and maybe I could have helped out? Because it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, we used to have, no. we used to have the moral think- and ethical high ground, I thought, politically at least. And then... What's been going on in England now and versus America, I feel like both countries are just egging each other on to be more mental in the way yeah, they behave. Yeah, I, I think you're probably right. I don't think they are. Um, I, as far as thinking I could have done something to, to, to help out, no, I don't think I could have. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've got... Uh, my, I, I don't have massive followings on Twitter or Instagram, but uh, my Facebook... Well, uh, you definitely uh, have a cold following. I've got about I mean, a thousand, two thousand people on Facebook, uh, uh, and that most That's of them, an influence. because of you what I done, what my roles I've done of the, these East End hard men gangster type roles, um, I 
have people who uh, who from come from that world. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. also, I've, I, and I've also um, little plug. I have a business back in London doing walking tours about gangsters. Okay, uh, nice, nice, so nice. It's nice, called yeah. the Gangster London Tour. Right, right, right. Operated right. by uh, I, I, I used to do it myself, and it's operated through a company called Brit Movie Tours. Right. They take all the bookings and the and the. So it's almost <coughs> like the, uh, the the celebrity tours here, or the it's hood very tours similar here. but walking tour, very similar to a celebrity tour. I and but the celebrities I'm talking about are villains. Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Cray twins. This is where Reggie and Ronnie uh, Cray used to exactly. This is where Reggie suck Re- each other's dicks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yes. Um, well, at least one of them was doing that. One of you, I don't know, he's sucking his brother's dick, though, was he? I mean, those they were lunatics. Well, actually, alleged, allegedly, allegedly they were both into a bit of a, a bit of a notch. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah they were both yeah. bi- they're both bisexual. One of them was gay, and one of them Ronnie, was bisexual. Ronnie, right? Ronnie was Ronnie was the psycho. The real psycho was totally gay. Yeah, uh, and uh, Reggie allegedly no dabbled. No, there's no proof, but there's a lot of people say they may have seen him doing it in prison and or whatever. I mean, when you're in prison, you got to do what you can to get. I guess you do what you do. Get, your get, get by, really. You know what? How did how does how does a man? Because you know you're. you're I'm not talking about that. I was, I was, there was a reason for that. Because anyway. you're talking about the walking tours. Walking tours. Yeah. Oh, and the type of people that I get following me as there a result of that, of all that, and the parts I roll. They're all they're, they're, they're a lot of them are quite sort of um, leaning towards the right. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, centre I mean, centre right rather than centre left. You know, working class, tough guys, and, and anti-immigration and all that. This all those kind of country's people. gone downhill, mate. Since all these people yeah. come over here with uh, taking I, our there jobs. There are some people that have actually quoted me that yeah. on Facebook, and um, I generally turn to think you're an asshole, mate. Yeah. There's, there's, and you're never going to not be an arsehole. Yeah. Nothing yeah. I can say or do will change your opinion of, of, of that, and nothing you say or do will change my opinion of you. I'm always intrigued by <laughs> actors who, because look, we, I mean, you know, I've, I've been uh, certainly typecast in, in different roles or uh, perceived as certain things because of partly what my uh, physical aesthetic is as well. Being six foot four, mm. well, I'm a bit skinny at the moment. I lost quite a lot of weight this year, but you know, reasonably you big. Look lovely, Thank you, mate. I appreciate it. But like, being a tall lad, and I used to have the long hair and a beard and all the big rings and a leather jackets and riding motorbikes, people go, okay, so you're this kind of guy. You're that kind of guy. You're I think prob- that's what people do generally. They yeah. to stereotype you on your look. I mean, you really extre- real extreme. You go down down Hollywood Boulevard and you see a homeless person who's dirty and filthy and mucky and, blah, 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 and yeah. all this, and you think they're a fucking lunatic, you stay away. Yeah. And, I, and an interesting, com- interesting thing, somebody told me, a nurse... That they do, people dress like that to make people stay away from them. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it's their protection. Absolutely, yeah. And but and we make people, an, some people with a career who they're actually they're, really normal, nice people who have fallen on hard times. But uh, they're normal. Well, maybe not nice people, but normal. Not, but they're. It depends. They're, Every case, they, is they've gone through right, a bad yeah. circuit to end up where they are. Sure, sure, sure. And and they're um, they're uh, dressing up. Uh, their image helps protect them. Absolutely. Um, and we make an assumption because of that image that they are, everybody makes that assumption that they are an arsehole. I mean, and, uh, as far as acting goes, with, um... as far as acting goes, for both of us, the, uh, the, the it's imme- it is immediate. What you look at uh, when you come on screen is what people think your character is generally. Absolutely. Um, Unless you're uh, going to go into a project where they have incredible prosthetics, it's very difficult to you know yeah. convey a character that is that disassociated from your physical aesthetics, really. Yeah, yeah, you, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I've never going to, probably never, I can't think of a part I'd never be I, I could do anything, I'm an actor. Uh, but there, I'm sure there are roles... You know, I'm never going to play that child in 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 uh, a Nickelodeon series. No, ever. sure, sure, sure. Um, but you, and also... I'm never going to play the dad of that child in a Nickelodeon. I probably... Oh, I don't know. see. I disagree because I think there's, I think there's, there actually, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued because this is uh, just for the 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 viewers here. Even though we were in that film together, we actually didn't have any scenes together. We didn't have no. really any interaction in that. In fact, I think the only time we actually connected was there was one night shoot. Yeah, where you were burying a, your character was burying, burying a, a body, body yeah. and we were. Digging up the body, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we sort of crossed very yeah. briefly and said, and, and spent the night freezing to death in some ch- church hall. Or they something, sat, well, they sat us in a car at one point whilst they reset all the cameras. They sat us in a car for almost three hours. Oh god! And uh, and then at the end of about about two hours and forty five minutes in, one of the assistants was like, "Do you guys actually just want to wait in the in the RV in the warm RV?" And we're like, "We could do that." <laughs> Fucking hell. 
So we went in there and we got 50 minutes to warm up and then they were like, all right, we're ready for you now. Always like, a, fucking uh, bastards. Just yeah. as you're getting warm and comfy or you're just in the middle of that ga- that, that word play game. Exactly. Like, they call you on set. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just, just, just really snuggling in. But right, what, come on. what I was going to say is that <laughs> even though, um, so we've never actually had a, had you know any length conversation or not really had any social time together. No. So I'm still guilty of... Um, uh, seeing you at least from from your your roles for instance one of the most uh, a lot of people will know you from the Guy Ritchie movie from Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels which was a huge hit a global success as yeah. well and really I think correct me if I'm wrong but it really defined that, that must have been a big a big bump in the career at that period and yeah. it must have been a real so for me, I'm going. All right, this bloke is a big bruiser. He's got the, you know, the the the, the sort of the Cockney accent, or at least the, you know, the sort of working class affectation mm. doesn't seem forced or put upon. It seems like, you know, that's probably where his family came from back in the day, or at least yeah. he has that in his history. And so, I understand how people could go. Oh, well, he's going to be. He's going to be like that all the time. He's a big tough dude. Like, Vinnie Jones walks around Hollywood acting like that all the time. That's that's definitely a part of what he is. But where, but when you say I, I wouldn't play that dad on that sitcom, I completely disagree because now having just even 15 minutes of conversation with you, oh, well, you I'll are take that very then. sweet and lovable and come off like, no, but you come off very approachable. You don't come yeah. off like you're about no, to break a geezer's legs. I like to, break I like, like to think I'm a nice person. Yeah. Um, I like to think I could break somebody's legs if I have to as well. Well, of course you could because you're a big lad. But, well, you, but might, you would, would sit you? on them. Would you? Well... I like to think I would. You know, years ago, years ago, and I think I heard you talking about this uh, about the ability to commit violence when some your family or you are. are oh, absolutely. In danger. I, I, and, I have, uh, I, I'm, I'm broken in the head in that respect that I would not go to the police if someone touched my child in the future. If someone, if I found mm. out someone had uh, assaulted my little girl or boy, I'd, I'd go and kill him. I would yeah. pick up a hammer and I'd kill him. Right. There would so be, yeah, I, I wouldn't was, even I, think about when it. I, when before I became an actor, decided to become an actor, I, I, I went through all different career paths try, not paths just career interviews right. one of them was joining the military right, and yeah. they said can you kill somebody and I immediately said yeah, yeah. and at, when then when I was 17 year old I think I probably could have done yeah. now I don't know I don't know what do you think changed uh, to, to cause that redefining of what your well, I guess wife, it's morals my wife would kill me if I killed someone <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no but you know because there, there are I think we're look we're, we're men and we're actors mm. actors have to be incredibly in touch with their their emotions and their emotional states and to understand yeah. how to explore those we're also a little bit fucked in the head if we need to spend the majority of our life portraying other people's stories and other living within other people's yeah. experiences and um, and also just inherently as men i still think there's a part of our genetic design which is to conquer expand territory uh take control and be powerful and also to if anyone threatens us or our tribe our Mm. family our group our friends to repel that with violent intent that seems to be that's part of what thousands and thousands of years of conditioning have done to yeah it's a a man thing it's a testosterone thing yeah isn't it and i think as you get older how old are you 36 now 36 yeah. well I'm 58 this year oh wow okay so you look good for 58 mate That's well right. thank you very much sunshine isn't it LA it's, sunshine it's LA sunshine haircut helps as well yeah you know just a little bit of a shave. I'm a bit stubbly today, but you know, I've just I've just done a big makeover. I had a full had a full beard and long hair. Oh yeah, about, about three weeks ago. Then I had an audition for a lawyer, and I thought I better change. Better yeah, change yeah, the look. yeah. Um, so uh, so yes, but you're that all helps. 50, that all, as fifty eight, what's what's changed? I don't know. It's like, I think the testosterone levels have dropped. Okay. I think I think there's probably a, there is a problem with chemical thing there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and also. Knowing probably my body couldn't do it as right. much as it could do when I was thirty-eight. Yeah. Um, have you got kids? No, okay. I have dogs. Okay. And That's if okay. somebody touched one of my dogs, there you go. They would be find themselves severely in jeopardy. Yeah. Yeah. Is that? See, this yeah. is what I'm saying. If someone look, I still think, you know, age and and you're correct. I mean, there's look, there's simple scientific and biological things that happen as we mature and as we also as we experience more life and gain more wisdom. You you are going to have infinitely more wisdom than I'm going to have at 36. So when you see a situation, you're going to go, okay, I could react, but what's that going to do to me, my career, my life, my wife, my my home? Like, am I going to put any of that in jeopardy? And if the answer is yes, is it worth it? Whereas I'm only just starting to really right. 
you know, I, I, I've got some wisdom, but I also have still a huge amount of impulse yeah. as a younger man that makes me go, no, if you fucking touch my girlfriend, then, you know, I'm breaking your jaw. That's what's happening. I don't give a fuck. If that lands me in a police cell. Yeah, yeah I've never been that kind of person anyway yeah. with, with the girlfriend thing. I've never been a okay. jealous person or a possessive person. Right. Are you possessive over your girlfriend? Not possessive of her. That's a good question, man. Possessive of other pe other men's attitudes to you, her. Actually, you know what? Without wanting to, uh, you know, I don't. Uh, this is interesting because I've, I've uh, lately been assessing um, the, uh, my, I'm not a jealous person, mm. but I am capable of being prone sometimes to jealous uh moments like i can i'm very cynical and wary of men uh behaving certain ways around my girlfriend right and it's not on her it's on what i think their intentions are because i used to be a fucking whore yeah and i know the little movements and words and gestures and that I would do to show a woman that's I was it, interested. Yeah. That's exactly why fathers are so protective of their daughters, yeah, I think. Because they absolutely know that that's what they did when they were yeah, yeah, 20 yeah. years this old. This little prick is trying to get in my daughter's knickers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, and and you know that this, that twat over there in the bar yeah. is talking to your missus and he's gives you, giving her the lines and they're the exact same I'll lines you would have used. Yeah. One, we were out one night um, actually celebrating a birthday a while, uh, you know, a couple of years ago. Oh, sorry, a year ago, actually. When mm. Her first birthday since we've been together. And um, there was a bartender at the party and, and she, uh, that she, she ordered a drink and there was a particular drink that she has um, stock in. She actually invests in this company right. and she wanted that brand. They were like, oh, we don't have any. She was like, oh, no worries. It's all right. So, so good. And then later on he came up and was like, oh, you know what? I actually found a bottle of it. Uh, so we have, we have got one bottle left. Um, let me, let me crack it open. He gave her a drink. He was like, it's on me. It's on me, blah, blah. And he put his hand like, he was like going, oh no. And she was like, oh, thank you so much. That's so sweet of you for looking. And he was like, no, nah, no, nah, it's, right. it's your birthday. And he didn't know that we were boyfriend and girlfriend because, you know, there was a group of us hanging out. And he put his hand on her back and it was so fucking, it was definitely, I know what that <laughs> hand, that hand was creeping on the upper butt crack. Now she didn't know, it's because she was a few drinks in, she's with her friends, having a good time and it was a very quick thing. But I fucking laser beamed on it and I, that was it. The rest of the night I had my eye on that motherfucker and I was like, if he puts his hand on her again, in any way, shape or form, I'm going to walk over and go, take your fucking hand off her back. Like, take your fucking hand off her. And um, it might become a thing. I might get kicked out of this bar, whatever, but I'll stand by it. And I had to assess, okay, now is that me over being overly sensitive? Yeah, probably. There's definitely a bit of that. Is it me being a little bit protective because it was a very new relationship at that point? Yeah, a bit of that. Yeah. Um, Do you think uh, your your girlfriend could have protected herself on her own without you? Oh, absolutely. My girlfriend's yeah. from the Bronx. Like she, she, she's so, Jamaican, Puerto Rican from the Bronx. Like if he, if he had put his hand a couple of inches lower and it had touched her ass... She absolutely would have turned around and gone, take your fucking hand off me. Right. Like she's so, but also it's, and then this is where I'm having so to it, assess. So this is your, this is your, that was your, as a man's, your protective instinct that men, all men have. Completely uh, Neanderthal. Absolutely. Totally Neanderthal. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I haven't, I don't think I've ever fully had that Neanderthal thing. Right. Despite what, <laughs> what many people may say, um, I do have Neanderthal tendencies, but um, just, I've always kind of like, no, she can protect us. She knows if if I step in and protect, I'm going to get a mouthful of shit for for stepping in. Right. Um, if it got further than that and became some kind of some physical, physical conf of course, confrontation, of course, different of course, story altogether. Of course, of course, yeah. But if it's some guy trying to chat up my girlfriend, wife, whatever, uh, and uh, uh, then it would be she can handle herself without. Yeah. She doesn't need my protection. See, that's maturity. That's maturity. And right. and also trust in your partner and understanding. You know, my, my wife, Sarah, would absolutely say, mature, him, never. <laughs> wow, she hasn't met me, clearly. I'm a fucking kid, aren't I still? It's it's interesting. It's weird, man. I, you've got I to gotta pick those battles. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's just funny to meet you and to have a conversation with you and realise that what the... What the and you've played a, a vast array of different roles at this point in your career. I have, yeah. I've been very, um, very lucky. And and you've and you you know I was looking at it, you're saying like oh you know I'm doing a few little jobs and bits and bobs on the sides because that's the nature of being in America as a Brit as an actor a working yeah. actor, but you know you look at your IMDb and it's every year there's projects every year you've been working you've been you've been you've been doing different roles, but I also know right. I'm guilty of of knowing you as in the foremost as a particular type of role certainly I'm guilty mm. of that type cast when it comes to you I go all right big lad tough boy. East End Gangster. Yeah. That's been a lot of the the seminal roles that that have defined moments in your career. Mm -hmm. um, 
Are you ever at, at odds with that, or have you em- just embraced that because you've gone, yeah, that is part of well, the, the 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 sort of the typecast image? Yeah, because you know, sometimes it's yeah, okay no, to totally embrace, embrace that, right? Totally embrace it, 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 it completely. I always, but I do also like to battle against the, and would love to be able to play against it. Right. And I have been able to play against it yeah. on some occasions. Um, and but I've yeah I've I've played a lot of gangsters and it's given me a career. So, yeah, yeah. So I've just broken. Your- no, no, it's all right. It flips I thought, thought it'd broken your your beautiful. Why designer. are you smashing my place? Gamer, up? gamer Help! chair. Help! <laughs> Oh, the gangster's smashing yeah. up my stuff. There it is. There it is. See, you do that so well. It's just, no uh, that's when Neanderthal like. comes out. <laughs> where, what was it? So, what was the upbringing as well? Where did where, where did it, where did uh, this kind of Cockney well, right Cockney from vo- the beginning? voice from? Well, I mean, you don't have to recreate the birth one, oh, right. but but I do. I am interested. Well, I, was you have born a working in, class I was born in Portsmouth. Portsmouth born and raised in Pompey. Portsmouth. Pompey, just outside right. Portsmouth, Fairham, uh, a little town on the coast. I don't know if you know that area. Right, right. And, I'm, I am. Uh, a, I DJ'd in Portsmouth a few times. Portsmouth is actually a pretty fucking tough area. Oh yeah, it's Navy Town. Yeah, it's a Navy. Yeah, it's a full-on right. Navy yeah, Town. Yeah, And it's got the, the constant uh, sort of battles between the Navy, all the all the sailors, and the locals. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so, and yes, everyone's trying to prove it's themselves. never. It's never not been a a, a, a a nice safe town. My mate's from Pompey, and he was uh, in the SAS, and he is sniper in the SAS, right. and he uh, he got arrested there he said uh, he got he actually got put away for two years oh. because after he left ser- military service he was out with some of his SAS buddies and they were down at one of the pubs and one of his mates one of his best mates is a, a black geezer who he was yeah. in the SAS with and apparently there's a lot of racism in Portsmouth as well it's quite oh, it yeah. be quite a racist town so he um he was down at a local pub, some fucking skinhead Nazis were giving him some shit. Everyone wanted to prove themselves. You know, they're shouting at these guys and going, oh, what the fuck are you doing in our local pub? You know, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Shouting, throwing out the M word and stuff. And the geezer, the guy was actually being very relaxed and was like, all right, lads, all right, lads, whatever, whatever. Because they know they, they're fucking, these guys are SAS. Yeah. Like, if it goes down, those neo Nazi fucking skinheads are getting ended. Um, and my buddy Ben stood up for his buddy and was like, he doesn't give a shit, but I give a shit. Shut your fucking mouth. And the guy was like, what are you going to do? He goes, let's step outside. Me and you, let's do it right now. Right now. Because he was a boxer in the, um, he was right. uh, he won a, uh, awards in, in the military for boxing too. Yeah. So as he starts walking out, this guy grabs a bottle and smashes it over the back of his head. He turns around, hits him once. Geezer f- uh, falls back unconscious, uh. smashes his head on the end of the bar, died. So he got uh, arrested for manslaughter or for murder at first. Because he was in the military, he got locked up because they thought he was a high risk of skipping the country, which, to be fair, he probably could have done very easily, you know. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, he spent, like, they, they delayed his case and it went p- pushed back and back so and back. So he just spent two years waiting to well, be tried. Almost. It was like a year and a half just to be tried. And then mm. when it finally went up in front of a, a, a jury, they threw it out immediately. They're like, this was self-defense. There was CCTV showing him getting bottled yeah. over the head. He turns around, hits the guy once. It was an accidental death. But yeah, it was. A, but he said like that's what that town is like. Just I think fractious I, I, violence. Yeah, it is. And I mean, I, I um, and even Fairham, which is like ten, seven or eight miles along the coast between Portsmouth and Southampton. Right. Um, even that is uh, was was violent. Probably still is. I don't know. I haven't been back there for so many years. But I, I, I used to be a bouncer down there. Right. Dor- okay. Dor- Dorman. And um, my very so you first, were already playing the tough guy role, my, even. Oh yeah, yeah. I was. Even before the acting. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that was in between act. I, I went away to drama school. Nineteen. I went up, moved up to London, and did drama school in London. Uh, well, hang on. Then, say, let's go back slightly. How did you discover your love for acting? Because you've grown up in that town. What What was it? Who or what pushed you into the arts? Uh, my it was my teacher uh, at sixth form, right. uh, Libby Bell. She, I, I did acting in, in uh, prior to that in, in secondary school in class, and I did a G, uh, what they called it GCSE. No, it wasn't a GCSE. It was a CEE, Certificate of Extended Education. Okay, right. I think that's what it was. No, that wasn't it. I don't know. Anyway, CSE, Certificate of Secondary Education. Right. Okay. He shouted because um, <laughs> it's so exciting. I got it right, um, and. Uh, I did drama for that, but right. I never, I never thought I'm going to be an actor or professionally or anything like that. Um, I wanted, I left school. I wanted to be a policeman. Tried out for the police. They told me I was too young. Come back in a year's time. So I went to sixth form in that year. I had no qualifications either. I passed. I left school with two CSEs, which is like the lowest of qualifications you get, and I didn't get a high grades in those anyway. Right. Uh, drama. Were you just not a fan of like? I was terrible at education. I was terrible. I'm always have been. I'm not a very good learner. Okay. Um, 
so I am a good learner. So when it comes to lines. And then, I am yeah. a good learner, but I'm not a, 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 academically. I'm okay, not, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I went to sixth form, and sixth form involved me doing CEEs, the extended education. Uh, one was in mathematics, one was in geology, and one was in ceramics, and the other one was in English communication, which involved a term of regular English literature, English language, and f- drama. Right. And a bit of filmmaking. Right. And that term of doing that, kind of, the teacher said, you're really, you're quite good at this. She said, have you thought of doing it for a living? And I said, no, I hadn't. And she pointed me in the right direction. I went from there, I went to a, to a, a college, a technical college in Cosham, about just outside Portsmouth, uh, for two years, did a pre-drama school drama course, um, and then auditioned for just about every drama school in the country at that time. Certainly in London, I did 11 auditions for drama schools. Didn't get into any of them except the one I went to, which was arts educational. Right. Went up there in 1981 when I was 19 years old. Left there in 84. Um, became, when I was born. Became a professional. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> you were solely responsible for the birth of it. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you are enjoying this conversation, make sure to check out um, Stephen Marcus on Twitter, S Marticus, uh, Smarticus 62, 62. And at the actor Stephen Marcus on Instagram. Also, make sure to check us out, patreon.com forward slash Savage Snowflake and at Jeff Leach on the line. Um, <laughs> so you, you went off to university, you started uh, started learning there, and this was because of this Libby Bell. Was Libby the, was Bell, the teacher. yes. Uh, my, mine was Neil Pankhurst. That was my teacher oh. at school who really gave me the depth of love for performance that yeah. I have. Yeah, there's always... It's always education, a teacher. It's always a teacher, a good Marcus. teacher. Yeah. It's, uh, th- it's, look, a- this country especially, I've, I've learned... The the is, the abject lack of education in this country, or or joy of teaching kids history and and and, and giving yeah. them an opportunity to explore different things in this country, I really think is what equates to the absolute lunacy that seems to you know permeate throughout the entirety of the country, but you know certainly a lot of the middle of it in America. Yeah. I don't. I have not been to any of the middle of America. No. Oh, I, no. I mean, some places are lovely. Don't get me wrong. I, there's there's I've there's been actually to South some Carolina people. actually, I, okay. I, which was. Um, which was lovely. I did. A, I, sh- I shot a teaser for a, a show that I was trying to get made and yeah. didn't didn't succeed. But it was it was good fun. I got to ride a motorcycle around South Carolina and love it and stuff. And it was good. But what uh, I'm saying, but is, what a wonderful, I, uh, what a wonderful person to meet in your life. Who you yes. you you you're, you're a talented actor. You've had now a great career and you've got a, 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 a well. There's two of, of them actually. Work. Two. There was her. Yeah. That got me to go into the educational process of, of becoming an actor. And then uh, then when I got to the drama school in uh, in London, Arts Educational, my first year was pretty difficult. Okay. Um, Why was it difficult? I don't know. I, it was difficult because I think I knew it all because I'd done two years and I was an arrogant teenager and I thought I knew it all. Okay. That was partially it. Also, I was the first time moving away from my family and my home, uh, living in London. I, I moved to from the South Coast, a nice family urban you know uh, suburban area yeah to uh living in the east end of london hackney uh, yeah. which at that time 1981 was not a nice place to be yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it was i got beaten no. up, i got i got into fights i got beaten up on a bus by five guys right 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 all that i ended up getting taken to hospital with noses on the wrong side of my face and all that um but um there was a teacher that there's the voice the principal i didn't get on with the principal at all and he tried to throw me out after the first year. But the vice principal, a guy called David Robson, who's no longer with us, unfortunately. I'm going to bring that down slightly. Sorry, mate. Just so, All we right. see, so we can see your lovely face. There we oh, go. yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, he, um, David, David said to the, to, to the principal, Lyle, uh, he said, I, we've got to give this guy a chance. I think he's got something. He's got something there. I, we, he's just not bringing it out yet. Have you ever sought out these so, two teachers? You ever you ever hit David, them up in the David life? Robson, yeah, I mean, I went back and taught there for a little while as well. Oh, nice. So, so David, uh, David took over as principal. Lyle gave up. He was uh, quite old, and he packed it in halfway through the, my time there, right? And went off back to Australia, where he was from. Right, and right. Um, as far as I, uh, he's he's probably passed on now. Right, right, um, right. And David unfortunately passed on as well. But you um, got to see him again and sort yeah, of thank got to see him David for that. Yeah, and, and yeah, if it wasn't for David Robson, I would probably have ended up working on the dustbins or something. Yeah, um, or driving a cab. Yeah, <laughs> which is what I'm doing now. Ironically. Hey, <laughs> part time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's what you got to do. You, you know, giving up acting and not giving up acting, giving up a career in England. Yeah, and moving here. Scary as fuck, it's mate. Scary, and it's starting again. It's basically starting again. I gave up a 35 year acting career. Yeah. to come here. 
and start and try and make a career here. And also, I've done I should, films, I should I've say done... for our viewers, because like, unless people have... Obviously, my, my British viewers are going to instantaneously know who you are. No. Uh, um, and a lot of the Americans, if, they, if they're if they a fan of like British culture or, like I say, directors like Guy Ritchie or stuff like that, they go, oh, yeah, I know that bloke. Yeah, I've seen yeah, a few yeah. things. Or actually in Canada as well, you've been in a, a series that's kind of returned in a number of different... Um, different guises, yes. Different yeah, guises yeah, yeah. as well. Star Hunter. Yeah. Star Hunter. But it's, you've had like maybe three different incarnations of that show as yeah. well over the years. So I'm assuming a lot of those viewers will know you as well. But for the American, general American viewer... I should say, like, you know, Stephen Marcus, you, you had, like, you're a very recognisable face in British pop culture as a film actor, like, as mm -hmm. a film and TV actor. Yeah, you know, thank you. People know, yeah. no, but people know you, you know, they go like, oh, yeah, I know that geezer, yeah, 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 I love him, I've mm -hmm. seen him in this, I've seen him in that. And uh, and, and I will say, with um, with way more, you know, uh, depth of career and, and exposure than I, for instance, has, as an actor, even in the UK, um, and yet, I don't know. I found it deeply fucking scary, giving mm. up all of that security, the money, the offers of work, the regularity of what you can do, yeah. and just going, now I'm going to go and sink all my money, my time, my energy into this foreign country that isn't very forgiving to uh, uh, new arrivals yeah. across the board. I mean, it's it would be worse if we were Hispanic, I'm sure, but you know for, what I mean? For like, me, I, I think I didn't, I wasn't scared at all. Why for, did you come for out? A couple what, brought, of reasons. what brought you out here? Well, I've been coming here doing stuff here and uh, visiting pilot season, et cetera, for about 25 years. Okay. So I knew here, and me and my wife came here in 2008. Right. Um, to, to actually stay for a to, period to, of time. To stay yeah. for, we, well, we came here. I came. I had an O-1 visa, and we came to uh, with the dream of, like, oh, it's going to be great. I'm going to get loads of jobs. And it's yeah, going to yeah, do yeah, this. Yeah, nah, yeah. Nah, it's Trouble is, our timing was not great. My wife... Quit her her job. Uh, she was working for an insurance company in London. Right, right, right. And she quit that. She handed in a notice, and the day after that, the Lehman Brothers bank f collapsed, and the two thousand eight world financial cri uh, crisis happened. Right. So um, we got here, and there was no work. There was nothing going on. Uh, there was also going to be a strike. Right, right a strike, right, right. and SAG were threatening the strike as well. Yeah. So all the shows were in were in lockdown. Um, there was nothing being made for about six months. So I was like, ah. Bugger, good timing, and um, and then um, it just didn't kind of work out. But we had fun. We spent uh, my 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 mum passed, and so I inherited some money. Spent all that. Yeah, Sarah spent all her savings. Had a bit of a pie. We had a we had two, eighteen months here of great fun. We lived in our house down uh, in Studio City. Uh, our neighbours were uh, Steve Carell. Um, uh, Drew Barrymore used to run the house next door to she didn't live there then uh, when we were there though um, we are, um, did you Sean, Sean Michael Patrick is it Sean Michael no, not Sean Michael Patrick um, go get, go, Doogie Hauser. oh that. fuck yeah I don't know his name I know yeah. who you're talking about though but he, he lived around the corner was often seen jogging past and uh, uh, Patrick um, what's his name Pa I know who you mean. Yeah, who you it's mean. Patrick yeah, something or other or something. Yeah, Patrick, yeah, 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 yeah. Very fresh faced guy who's how yeah. I met your mother. How I met a, your yeah, mother. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it did was you ever really... have a nice chat with Steve Steve Carell over the over the phone? Uh, no, no, no. He, he oh. wasn't a direct neighbour, but he was in the neighbourhood. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, and then yeah, it was a really fancy neighbour. Frame leaning over. Like, oh mate, what's going on? He'd be like, yeah, I'm a neighbour. The direct neighbour uh, was uh, he wrote Star Trek the fame, the one that seems to be the most popular the Star Trek movie. Four, which is one where they save the whale. Right, right, right. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen that, where Spock saves a whale. And I mean, you've got to save a whale. Yeah, save the whales, man. But there's a big, there's a big they, whale. They, they, actually mean, they actually meant save whales, the country. Right, but, okay. You know, <laughs> somebody's got to save it. Oh my God, it's fucking Spock, look at that. <laughs> Can you imagine, Mr. Spock landing in fucking Cardiff, eh? There you go. So you came out here, gave it a bit of a shot that time, and then it was like, bad yeah. timing, Sorry, yeah, back to the story. I, I have a tendency to meander off. No, so um, that's why I'm here. Uh, yeah, so yeah, came back. Uh, we, we had to come back to England because we ran out of money, spent it, had fun. Uh, so you didn't come back with a sour taste of America? God, you, no, no, I no, loved it. And um, uh, and probably because we were living such a good life. If we were living a hard life, sure. maybe might not have loved it so much. But we did, we went back to we always vowed we were going to come back. Um, found and got an opportunity to get go for the green card. Yeah. Did all that, got the green card. Um, in 2017 and came back. Nice. Uh, straight away. And because I we've got the green card, my wife can work. As well, yeah. she, she, she earns a shitload more money than I do. There you she's go. A proper, she's got a proper job. And, yeah, you know. see, my girlfriend's an artist as well, so I, I yeah. fucked up. 
You yeah, know, we're both they never a... fall in love with another artist. You you just screwed for the rest of your life. And yeah. you're, you're in poverty. Aren't Actually, you? to be fair though, you know what? I think she she and I um, there's a number of reasons why I think this relationship is so successful and, mm. and feels like the first mature relationship I've had. Outside of the fact that she's an, a fucking goddess, like across the board, she also I think it's we're funny in it. My wife's a goddess too. There we go. Yeah, there you go. Funny how that happens. It's funny how like we know how to say that. And it's important to say it publicly because, uh, you know. <laughs> That's right. You have to, you know, there's no point in saying it to yourself. I was sick for three days. She made me chicken soup every day. What oh. the, what, what's your girlfriend done for you, yeah. viewer? Dear viewer. Um, <laughs> maybe you should call her a goddess publicly a little bit more often. But no, it's true. I do believe that. And, and also I think it's, um, you know, we sort of, we're at, very much at similar stages of our career where we both got a lot of success behind us mm -hmm. both got you know we're not living uncomfortably like we're living a nice life when I think yeah. about I, sh I shit on my little apartment and stuff a lot but actually I'm living in Hollywood in a nice place on my own and I've never had roommates for since I was fucking 19 right. I've always you know afforded yeah. to live on my own so that's and I've never had to, I've never fortunately touched wood it's always been it's always been creative work that has kept a roof over my head Right. So I think that's a level of success, and I've had to realize yes, that is you know you're right, you're absolutely right. But coming uh, to I'm, America I mean, is very humbling, though, isn't it? Coming here, well, it absolutely makes you realize that how lucky you were back in England, yeah, and and uh, how easier it is in England. Absolutely, because it's this. I mean, there's so much more work here, so much more work in Hollywood, but there are so many more people after it, hundreds of thousands yeah. in this city, and on top of that. Right now, not. I mean, you know, right now, understandably, there's been a swing in the, in, certainly in the sense of like diversification, which means that yes, there are just infinitely less roles for white straight dudes in Hollywood. Yeah, which is fine. Uh, That's um, okay. That's going to be a period absolutely. of time. Absolutely. Uh, 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 somebody said to me, I was bemoaning a little bit once uh, about, you know, well, I'm a white middle aged male, and I and we're just not de rigueur anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this person, this girl, said, well, welcome to the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, okay, give you that. Yeah. You're, that's true. We're also, I think there's still, you, you've got to create your own stuff. In fact, you already do create your own stuff. You write, you're a screenwriter, you're directing. Do you know what, if, I, if, well. I, if somebody, if a young person said, I want to be an actor uh, and, and become an actor, how do I, what do I, what do I, what do I do to, 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 to have a career like yours? And I would absolutely say, straight away, start making your own stuff. Start writing, writing, making little movies, whatever it is. Do that. Don't, fo don't focus on being an actor. Focus on making stuff and, and knowing what you want to do, yeah. and then create that, make that happen, Absolutely. make it happen. Create your own stuff. Even I mean, you look at like Reese Witherspoon. Mm -hmm. She has made herself the hottest property in Hollywood mm -hmm. because she is making all stuff for herself. Yeah, not one. People don't go to her with well, maybe they might come to her there with projects, but she'll be in those projects. Uh, she she well, she's created afforded a level of celebrity you know, and she, fame and, and she got now, so far she re she recognised even as a star uh, and a star of you know legally blonde etc she knew that if she didn't create the stuff herself that would all slowly disappear to keep up there she has to keep making it herself Seth Green Shia LaBeouf these are all yeah. people who like create Jason Gordon Levitt these guys mm. are all huge celebrities, you know, household and names. And still making. And yet every yeah, single one yeah. of them is producing, directing, writing, Ashton making Kush, their own uh, stuff. There you go. Yeah, exactly. all of them. Everybody. Yeah, you have to. I mean, and that, that's also the growth of a performer as well, I think. I think, yeah, 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 absolutely. And it, and it's also, it's great fun. Are you falling more in love with the writing, with the directing and the producing, or, or, or is, the, is the main the directing, passion direct, still? I mean, my directing and producing, <laughs> I've I've put those terms in my in my description, uh, and my biogs and things. But they're very, very. I've only then directed. You've... I've only directed one thing and produced a couple of things. Right, that's one more than a lot of people. So. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I suppose so. Yes, but, but the, the right. I, lo I, I am absolutely loving screenwriting. Absolutely loving it. I've done. I've written uh, in the past. I've written two two other movies that were both got made. Wonderful. Um, Congratulations. And I'm writing one at the moment with an American friend of mine, uh, my friend from Oklahoma, Frank Frank Krim. Uh, uh, and uh, it, it, we're absolutely. I, I well, I, I think he's liking it, but I know I'm absolutely. I've absolutely loving the process and creating this story that um, we've put out to a few people to get feedback mainly. Yeah, notes and. Everybody thinks it's a great story, and I love that as well. Well, I look forward to get, seeing that get made as well. I'm looking forward to seeing it get made as well because yeah. I'll be starring in it. Yeah, that, see, that's, <laughs> see, my ego as an actor never stops. No, 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 and nor, nor should it. And that's also I don't even know if that's just ego. I think that's ambition. But like, like you say, I think there there does become a process for a lot of creatives. I get messages all the time. Um, 
I just did a I just I'm, I'm I'm in a video game right now called Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So I'm playing oh, yeah. the yeah. character of Ghost, and that only got announced a few weeks ago. And I've had a lot of young people who have a, a a passion for video games or for voice acting or think they have good voices say, "Do you mind like give me a bit of advice? How could I how can I become a voice actor? How do I get an agent? How do I do things like mm. this?" And uh, I love giving them advice. I love trying to impart that wisdom and help someone else because who knows who the, look yeah. like your teacher turned you on to acting and then that guy who who kept you in that that college and helped you with that process you would never have done all the things that you've gotten to do through yeah. life if that person hadn't given you that little push or nudge in the right direction. So I like trying to do that as well. But I, again, like yourself, the first bit of advice I go, I go listen, no one is going to give you a job. You're not just going to get a job by saying, I'm good at voice acting because someone hire me. Mm. You have to prove it. You have to create your own stuff. And I reference them to, I keep my voice reels and my show reels very public on YouTube even though right. against sometimes the advice of some people they're like just get rid of that now like you've already done enough stuff like you don't need that out there I go no because some whenever a kid asks me how do I become a voice actor I go right go and listen to this and see what I wrote every single one of those little characters is about 45 characters on a three minute tape and I wrote every single one of those and the way I did it see, I know, I've got to do that there you go. I have thought about that and I've just not acted well, on there it. There you go. And, and so there you go. So I'm, t I'm telling yeah. these I'm going, I'm going, listen, this is what you do. What roles do you want to play? Create a piece of content that you're in charge of making. Do yeah. it on whatever budget you can afford. If the budget is zero, do it for zero dollars. Find other friends who want to do that. Put messages out on forums. Go on Reddit and find filmmaker stories or voiceover people. Find people who can help you and create that, that tape, that showreel. I uh, am, and, and, and the process never stops, even though seemingly from the outside, people go, all right, well, this motherfucker's like shooting Comedy Central um, stand-up shows. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's uh, he's in a, a major AAA video game and he's done movies, he's done TV shows and he's blah, 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 blah. I'm still working seven days a week to do the things that I want to achieve. Yeah. And the biggest uh, part of that is even though I'm far along in one industry, Right now, for instance, I'm writing scripts, short scenes, with a couple of different actor friends of mine yeah. who who I know, they don't have the showreel material to get the roles they want to get cast as. I don't yet have a great uh, uh, you know, theatrical, dramatic acting showreel, right. for instance, to play the characters I want to play. Superheroes, uh, fantasy warrior characters. Those are the things that I really want to fucking play. <laughs> I'm a nerd, and I love swords, and I love guns, and I love working you know, I've, out. I wanted the... the, the Two things I want to do, would love to do, and I haven't yet, right. is A, number one is play a werewolf. Right, okay. I cool. have a thing about werewolves. I was talking about it with my with Frank the other day. I could see um, you with some I nice used to big, dream, have dreams about big werewolves. Big going on, nice big yeah. hairy chest popping out. There you go. Um, <laughs> I'm practicing. Okay. This is what you got <laughs> to do. working on it. This, is what, on the, it. this is what the wife likes in the bedroom, yeah, I can yeah. tell. Yeah. <laughs> it's a full moon tonight, yeah. Stephen. Put yeah. on the outfit. My hands are getting hairy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you want to play a werewolf okay I want to play a werewolf and I want to be in a sword and sorcery film right you know I want to do King Arthur or something like that there you go uh, unfortunately Guy Ritchie didn't put me in his film right and I'm forever upset do you still have a relationship with him no uh, yes and no no uh, not a, not a, we don't have contact as such when I wrote you my book when I wrote the book dinners on a Sunday together no. but you but you if no. you see each other at an event or if you're chatting to each other you'd have a you know oh, I we mean, might like... wave at each other across the room yeah. okay okay <laughs> but I uh, yeah I tried to when I when I because um, that was his was like, writing a book that was one of his first big hits that it was, it, that it was, was his, really no it was his first that was his first hit it was very first he never prior to doing that he hadn't made he'd made a short which was actually the the card game part of of Lockstock right was the short that he'd already shot that as a short and he shot that as a teaser and he'd done commercials and he'd shot and um, pop videos he'd and in shot the same that way that like as you know, a teaser Tim to for the moon always works you know puts his wife in every movie and works with Johnny Depp and he has a returning group of people that you guy know, guy doesn't guy as far as I know the only person he's really kept working with all the time Jason Fleming and Jason Statham yeah they're, those two they're the only two that he's, he's had on several occasions uh, or a few occasions uh, and them even them not that much yeah, yeah he's kind of moved on but you do you move on people move on it's a, it's fine um, me, me and Guy worked well together and and uh, uh, that, but we never actually we didn't bond as people sure, bond sure, as friends sure. outside yeah, of yeah, the yeah. movie so and I think you as a director you do have that you want to work yeah, with people you've got, you got your mate's favourites yeah you absolutely got. his current mate favourite is Charlie Hunnam 
I yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves Charlie, and Charlie's in he lo- everything he, he does. He loves casting someone as King Arthur who can't even do an English accent anymore. He loves that. <laughs> I've not seen it, so I can't say. I am a huge fan of Charlie Hunnam as an actor. Like as, I think in Sons of Anarchy, he was absolutely fucking astounding. Yeah, and in Queer, uh, uh, Queer, um, uh, what was the uh, um, what was the what was the show he that launched him when he was a kid? Uh, oh my god! Are you trying to say Queer as Folk? Queer Eye, no, Queer as Folk, yeah. The gay thing. Yeah, he was, was he in that. Yeah, was yeah, he? yeah. As a young, as a young, oh, right. sweet little bare-chested twink of a boy, he was in oh, was that. It? He wasn't the one that was in it. Who Long had, blonde, yeah, had, 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 had a thing like, going with um, uh, the so, Irish actor who was in Game of Thrones. So long since I watched it. I remember my uh, mum and we all used to sit down and watch the show. And we kind of loved it. And we loved the stories, but he was good in that as well. So he's a talented actor. But I think that if you, you know. If you get cast in a role where you have to speak your native language and it's been that many years of speaking American that you now sound like an Australian American Kiwi and yeah. you don't really... he's got enough money and had enough time and energy to pay a decent vocal coach to yeah. get him back to a, a good accent. And that that for me is like a small thing that should have been infinitely tighter mm. in that movie. Yeah, I, I mean, I would, yeah, I agree with you on any movie. Yeah. I, don't, I haven't seen that film, like, I, I, but any film that anybody does. My American accent, accent is very really... strong, for instance. Right. However, is it? Go on, then. yeah, it's pretty strong. Go on. I, I can do like a generic American accent. Yeah. So if I'm living here in California and I have to go and do an audition, yeah, yeah. I can I can pass as an American actor right. or an American you know American person I guess. Yeah. See, um, I find talking and talking in the street very difficult. Yeah. You know, in a normal situation. Uh, you know like what? That. But I can normally I can, when people go like, go on, do it then. I go, I go, no, no, I'm not going to do it now. I'm gonna do it. And now I do it every time because right. if I can't, it's good practice. I have to be able to do that. Yeah. And I have to do that. See, I'm I'm different. I cannot. Like just, just turn it on and turn off. Turn it yeah. on. Yeah. But if you give me like, uh, hey, if we if we Mary had a little this, lamb, its fleece was white as snow. And there we go. And if we, if we stayed in this that. for a, for the next five ten minutes, we'd by the end like of it, a couple we, of dicks, couple of dickheads, <laughs> couple of dickheads. We wouldn't say that. Couple of assholes. Just a couple, couple of, of assholes. Yeah. 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 But but here's the deal. If I uh, one when I thank you very much land that role as an American um, character. Yeah, I'm still going to take part of my fucking paycheck and every scene that I have to prepare, I'm going to go and work with a vocal coach to ensure that I am 100% perfect on my pronunciation because that's part yeah. of the fucking... That's I don't what Gary Oldman does. Over. Every like, film he does now. And that, Gary Oldman's one of the best actors in the world. He has a vocal coach on set with him all the time. One of the best actors in the fucking universe. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, Gary Oldman and I used to have sex with the same lady. No, oh, nice. Yeah, she, he, he, I, I believe... Not at the, not at the same time. At the same time, ah. so he uh, he was certainly um, Do tell. enjoyed a little. Well, th- this is the story I got from her. I can I can can't prove oh, anything. Not at the same time, no, we not, weren't. Not three. Sa- <laughs> That's what we I we weren't fucking Eiffel towering over the top or like high five. Like, come on, tag in. You're in, Holden. Get in there. Um, no, but we he was uh, he had a lover, um, and I believe this was during a period where he. Uh, I don't know if his his marriage was still something that was going on or his relationship was still going on, but whatever. He mm. was certainly had a lover at this time when maybe he shouldn't have done. And that lover, I, me and her were just having casual sex as well. And I remember at dinner one night, she was going, God, you remind me so much of Gary in some way. And I was like, who? And she was like, oh, it doesn't matter. And, I was like, and we got the story out. She got a bit more drunk. She told me, she's like, well, me and Gary Allman hang out. She was very posh and very elegant, tall, blonde, elegant very earthy kind of like yeah. warm kind of woman and I was like mm, he's got great taste Gary Oldman what a wonderful woman she was All right. but also one degree of separation between Gary Oldman's penis and mine yeah so you no, I'm not going there tips. it's like we touch tips <laughs> 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 and if talent can rub off then you know other things can too yeah oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. can you imagine if I got an STD and it was from Gary Oldman <laughs> That would be a great story, wouldn't it? What What about right? So let me tell me tell me a <laughs> bit more on. about the uh, yeah exactly. I I also want to know a bit more about like the rock and roll lifestyle because when you come when you have all this success in 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 your career and you start blowing up, yes. Did you ever like go out into the world and get a little bit get a little bit naughty, a little bit devilish? Um, from well before Lockstock, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I, I, I we've talked about this at the off off mic. Um, I had a... You had your own struggles as well. I right? had my struggles with drugs. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, or too, one particular drug. Well, mine was um, alcohol, yeah. My, yeah. Mine is I, alcohol. Mine, I never had an alcohol problem. Never, ever, ever. I, I still and drink. you're British. I know. I, 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 thought, I know exactly where to find it. Not a problem at all. Yeah. Hey, boom, ding. Uh, no, I've... Yeah, I... 
uh, it goes right back to my second, my very first film, 1985. Right. Uh, was a film called My Beautiful Laundrette, which uh, with um, Daniel Day Lewis. Right. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's he's pretty good, isn't he? He's pretty good. Yeah. He's a funny fella. Really? What was he like to work with? I mean, it was great. It was because he was he was he was playing South London geezer. Right. So it was like, you know. Uh, Stephen Frears directing, uh, and it was like he's, he, he he absorbs the roles. You know, he just absorbs his character. Well, he's a yeah, massive. So he was like he was hanging out with us, doing a bit of a, uh, having a joking, he laughy, laughy, jokey, jokey, laughy stuff. And then I saw him uh, about must have been about probably a couple of years later. I was on uh, at Shepparton Studios doing something else. Can't remember what it was. Right. And he was there, and he was moved on. He's doing a film called The Unbearable Lightness of Being. Right, yes. In which yeah. he paid a 1980s advertising executive, I think it was. And he was all suited and booted, but a junkie type character as well. And he he, he, he just kind of recognised me and kind of from a, went uh, across, across the yard there. But he was so deeply into that character that that character didn't know who I was. Yeah. And that, that that was a bit odd, but that's that's fine. That's what he does, and that's what make. And he is brilliant at doing that. So, and how did you get yourself out of the, the bad habits then? What was what was the change in all the, the change? Well, it was it was fifteen years. It was actually yeah. It was. I'll go, I'll go a little bit into the story. I was eighty five. Went out with uh, while we were filming you put for laundry. Went out went out on a night uh, with with some of the, my mates on the film, and we went to the Wag Club. And yes, yes, uh, yes. in in good old Suhu, yeah, yeah, and yeah. and um, went to see a blues guy playing, who, and who I kind of recall was really good, right? But they got some coke, right? And I tried it for the first time. Oh, we were with, um, we, we were hanging out with a guy called Youth, who was uh, the uh, bass player from Killing Joke, right? And uh, and a record producer as well, and. They got all this gear and they got it from this gay guy who was trying to get me high to have his wig, wicked way with me. And they stopped that. They protected me from that. But it was my first time I'd ever tried that that wicked wicked powder. Yeah. Uh, and 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 then from there, I didn't touch it for another, like another 10 years after that. Yeah. And then I was seeing a girl We went and we broke up and I went on a job. And on the job, one of the other actors said, oh, shall we stay up? We were filming in Nottingham. He said, shall we stay up and have a good weekend? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See my man. And that was it. From that moment, that moment on, I was like... <coughs> Shoving it, shoving yeah. it. Snort, Especially snort. when you're succeeding Until, and making money. It's so easy. Mine was yes. with my birth of TV. Is when I, maybe if I, I hadn't made, been, been earning good money, I probably wouldn't have carried on doing it. Mate, Coke is such um. If uh, this is, you know, I, I'm, 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 I appreciate you talking about it, and I, and I was I was tentative about whether to even bring it up, but I, I, I think it's important because, first of all, it's so far in your past, and, and you've gone through it is such now. A, I've been clean now 15 years. There you go. Well done, congratulations, yeah, and 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 also because my my own process of recovery from drinking, for instance, is only like it's only nine months that I haven't. Mm. I mean, I only drank two months of last year. I did three months at the beginning of the year. A couple of months I was drinking again, and then I got back on the wagon. And now I've been. In fact, it's probably more than nine months now. Anyway, oh, uh, I should probably learn my birthday. But but yeah. I um, I think it takes immense strength to overcome an addiction like that and to, and to turn your back on it. It shows great strength of character as well. But also to talk about it this, these days, it, it's becoming more and more important to me to talk about these things openly and with people who I respect I and admire. Yeah. Because, I don't know, I, as a young man, thought that doing coke and being and drinking and partying and being the fucking rock star. I thought I was a rock star. I was on yeah, TV yeah. hosting oh, too, the yeah. big shows for BBC. Lux, Lux, I'm like, look at me, I'm fucking, everyone knows who I am when I walk down the street. After I got Lux, money. The best thing that ever happened to me, rock star wise, after Lockstock was was um, walking down the street towards the Atlantic, in, in Sorry, towards the Atlantic bar, and a barman, uh, the doorman, seeing me coming down the street, Parting the waves, yeah, parting the yeah, crowd. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I didn't even have to touch flesh. Yeah. To, I just zoomed straight through. Yeah, yeah. And oh, mate, yeah, come, come, yeah, come yeah. down in front of me. Get, get out, out of the fucking the, way. Yeah, you go. I don't know his name, but he's one of the locks hook actors. Yeah. Get out of the fucking yeah, way. There you go. And then probably the bouncers <laughs> are the one coming up trying to sell your coke, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Mate, yeah. and when I think back to those years, like it's. Uh, uh, and uh, this may be a completely different experience for you, which is why I'm interested in talking mm. through it. It's. Actors especially are so prone to want to escape the reality of themselves. That's part mm. of the reason for creating these characters, telling these stories is yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm infinitely bored by reality. And I'm also grew up actually quite 
deeply self-loathing for the majority of my life. And that's only something that I've started to uh, change over the last year or two in a major way. Mm. But the instantaneous relief and escapism that comes with getting fucked up, whatever form, however you yeah, do it, whether yeah. it be drink, drug, sex, whatever. And I tried all of those. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just wish, I wish 10 years earlier someone had sat me down and gone, there's other ways to, there's other ways to build up your own self-esteem. But you, don't, no, no, ways- but you wouldn't, have, wouldn't have listened to it. Or, well, I don't know, actually. because I was probably sur- wouldn't. I was surrounded by a lot of enablers. You know, when you got loads of money from TV and everyone knows who you are and you're the fucking boy, I'm walking around thinking I'm the dog's bollocks and I've always got like five grams of coke in my pocket. Mm. I've always got like a nice note to give to a dormant so all of my mates can get in as well without them to just fucking queue up. And then we were going down Mahiki and running up like 30 grand bar bills and then leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Not even paying them. <laughs> Like we're yeah. putting like my mate's little brother's card over the bar and shit and then just getting him to phone up once we'd left and say, my car's been stolen and getting it cancelled. So when they try and ring it through at the end of the night, they're like, all right, yeah. But they got Arab shakes going down there spending 200,000 oh, yeah, quid. Yeah, yeah. But, we, but the kind of shit we got up to, we thought we were fucking untouchable. Mm. And then it took like a few really good friends who didn't deserve to die dying to go, is that what I want to do? Or is or do I want yeah. to achieve some of these ambitions and dreams and goals that I have for myself and tell better stories and do it from a more honest place? What uh, what 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 changed for you? What made you go? This is fucking bullshit. And I need to stop putting this. My wife. Yeah. I met my wife. Yeah. She literally. We. I, I met. I was. I met my wife at a, uh, a, a charity fashion show. Right. And literally within half an hour, we were snogging in the corner. And um, then, what was how long ago after? It was probably about three or four weeks after that, I was flying out to Canada to shoot a movie for four months. And I said to her, oh, God, come out, come out, come on. And she came, and, and I didn't really think she was going to come, but she did, twice. And she came and visited me in Canada on the set. And I was so bang on doing coke that I was, when she was there, I was more interested in her not being there but, and, that, and me get, being able to get back and do some coke than the fact that I had this beautiful woman there in front of me wanting me. Incapable of being present. That's what I would, the drugs uh, Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Incapable of being present, yes. And when I came back from filming back to England, she kind of, she decided, oh, I'll give him another, give him another chance, give him a chance. And we ended up deciding we were going to get live together uh, and buy a house. Um, and, oh, hang on. Did I ask him before we did that or I asked her to marry me. Yeah, I think I asked them to marry me before we bought the house. No, no, we were going to buy the house. Anyway, we we're going to buy the house. And the day before we signed the contracts, I, I got clean. She said to me, we're going to get back together, but you've got to, stop, you've got to get off this stuff. I said, okay, all right. And then the day before uh, we bought the house and signed the contracts, I went out and got stoned. I was living in Brighton and she was in London and I got gear and I got on it and she phoned me up and within two seconds on the phone, she said, you're on gear, aren't you? You're, on, you're, you're high, aren't you? And I'm like, no, 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 I'm not. She said, yeah, I can tell exactly. He said, that's it, we're done. And I found her the next day and, and said, right, I'll, I'll stop. And she said, well, you're going to have to do something to prove it. And so we didn't buy the house and we, I went and started going to meetings. Nice. Uh, and from that day since, I never, never wanted it. I want her more than I want the drugs. There you go. And and I've sent a little tingle all up. Look, I've gone all goosebumpy. Yeah, mate. Um, no, because it's it's real, isn't it? And it's mm. and it like hearing. I think that, that this is one of the important things. That, you know, recently I just had a, a completely unrelated. Sorry, so sorry to keep relating it to different things. But there was a, a, I I called out um, a gaming streamer uh, mm. who's only seventeen, but still you, at seventeen you, you're legally tried as an adult in a fucking court of law, and you're he's barely a few months away from being a, an actual adult. But he dropped the N-bomb on stream, hard R, mm. um, you know, said the N-word uh, on someone else's stream and only apologized because it, it was being broadcast and he didn't realize that this right. other person was broadcasting and then was like, oh, sorry. And it's like, and I called him out because, not because uh, I, I've had a torrent of abuse from racists now, just going, oh, fuck off, you N-word, you know, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever, you N-lover, you know, stuff like that. Nice. nice. But for People me- are lovely. Yeah, but for, but for actually for every one of those, there's another hundred who said, yeah, or like the tweet that I sent and said, yeah, this is bullshit. Like, you don't, you don't just casually slip this word out. You should be better than that. Yeah. This is Black History Month this happened during as well. Just, just ridiculous. 
But the reason I do things like that, and the reason that I am glad to have this story of your of your huge uh, and what I think is a very brave journey to understand the, and prioritize what is important in your life, and clearly that has filled you with the confidence to continue to succeed in your career. It has given you a life of love with your wife. I'm not so sure about the giving me the confidence. Uh, she gives me confidence, uh, and she is an incredibly incredible woman. Uh, 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 with uh, incredible talents and abilities, yeah, uh, and she makes my life an awful lot easier. Well, the, um, the reason I want to share those ways. stories and why I think it's important to do so, and you're not the first, and you won't be the last person that I'm grateful to get those stories from, is because we do have young fans, we do have people, and I'm not even talking like kids. I'm talking like people in their twenties, mm. people in their thirties, even. He's still a young man or a woman then, and a lot of people might feel like they're stuck or there's they want to escape issues problems sadness whether it's at home whether it's at work whatever's getting them down and in this day and age mental health is so often overlooked and it's only just now dropping the stigma um and i think it's important for other people to hear those stories and go you know what i admire Stephen marcus i love that fucking movie i love that tv show he's in or jeff leach i love watching him or i love playing the video game and hearing his voice whatever it is Mm. and for them to know that those people have had periods where they were fucking their lives up, or or were were not yeah. being what they could ach- what they could really achieve because they were so scared of themselves, or didn't have the confidence, or had these these broken parts of their brain and overcame that. I think it's important to pass those stories on because yeah. hopefully that might might change one person who listens to this. They might go, all right, well, you know what? Th- thank God now uh, um, mental illness is being talked about a lot more yeah. because the, both you you said you know why did why did we do uh, why did why did you do it. Yeah. to start with well it, it was self-medication yeah it's a, no, no unknowingly medicating myself because i wasn't confident and i'm still not it's probably made me less confident about things now i my i often go through periods of depression not and i'm i'm not the 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 the, the i want to sit in my in my bed with my blanket over my head type right, depression, right, right. but just like i don't feel strong today kind of depression yeah. uh, and I feel sad and I, d- I have days where I could burst into tears over nothing literally quite often some movie on TV my wife loves a lifetime movie I can't watch them yeah. they'll set me off Maybe she doesn't know that she just find that out I do if I sometimes I'll, if I watch su- anything superhero as soon as something heroic happens yeah I'm, I'm a little bit <laughs> <weird. laughs> yeah, 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 like, are yeah. you alright I'm like yeah I'm just fucking, I don't really cry when it's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah yeah animals Animals getting hurt or whatever. Oh God, Lassie! You know, yeah, yeah, Lassie yeah. movies. Um, oh God, don't watch that documentary. Uh, don't fuck with cats. That'll break you. That'll break you. <laughs> is that funny? Is it like it's, funny it's, collection it's, of cats? Oh no, 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 no! It's about a guy who was trying to become a serial killer, and he ended up actually murdering uh, someone. And he he started out by torturing and murdering cats. And oh, uh, right. yeah, it was really fucked up. Yeah, and it's about this. Anyway, so I don't give a fuck about people hurting each other. No. Uh, you want to? You want to? Front row. You want to hurt each other? Fine. It, yeah, but, but you hurt an, an, an animal or a child. They don't. They 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 have no choice in that matter. Yeah. You know. Yeah, they can't defend themselves. Yeah. Either. Yeah. So it's funny actually. To hurt each other. I listened to a podcast where, uh, thing called Monstruo. Okay. Uh, it's a horror uh, thing. They've written these horror stories, and the first one I I, I wrote was about two gay guys one eating each other. Or one was eating the other. That's one you wrote or you listened to? No, I was listening to it. Oh, okay. And it's it's hardcore. It's like, wow. God. I mean, gay men are delicious. Oh, cut his penis off. Fried it up. I mean, if if, if someone was going to eat me, I hope they'd start with a penis. There's good eating on mine. (laughs) Wow. Mine's a pig in blanket. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, that's because we're British. We've still got our foreskin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, (laughs) Stephen Marcus. Yeah, he's a pig in black. We went through. Steve we went Marcus. through. We went through. We went through a lot there, man. We went. We went through a lot of. We've we've learned mm. about your history. We've learned about your start into the acting career. We've learned about you battling demons and being now fifteen years clear of that. We've learned about the ups and downs of the uh, of the acting career and being being a recognizable face and this fear of coming to a new country. I feel like uh, I have a much deeper understanding of you and I and I, and it's and you're a you're a good beautiful soul and I and I hope that oh, you have okay. uh, a continued lifetime of success and I hope that this country gives back to you what you clearly have to give to the uh, the it's acting It's beginning. Industry. It's getting there. Yeah, man. I mean, you you, you said to me earlier, uh, well, you've been here four years and you just, or you've been, you had been here four years and you started feeling- Two like, years in LA, two years <coughs> in two years in New York. And you just kind of feel you're like, you're actually starting to make a living out of this I feel world. like 
Well, I feel like I'm now learning what it requires to be a success in the world of Hollywood. It's a very strange place and there really is... Um, I'm never going to be able to put on fake smiles and airs and graces. Mm. But what I realize is that you have to work incredibly hard, be incredibly diligent. You have to be likable as soon as you walk through a door. And yeah. that doesn't mean being disingenuous. It means being likable. And um, bravado and bullshit and carrying uh, a full sense of confidence will not work. It can work for a short period of time for certain mm. people and they get found out very rapidly. And I'd rather have a longevity of career. I want to be working when I'm 70, 80 years old and I and I want to be look back at the... No, but look no, back No, I at do the, as well. Yeah. I'm going to have to be working when I'm 70 or 80 you years You will old. be. You've already been working for fucking 40 <laughs> I'm done, years. I haven't saved up a pension at all. Mate, your IMDb <laughs> looks great. Don't worry. And, and, and No, but you know, I understand what I'm saying. And I, and mm. I, think, um, I think I've only just started to now go, ah, it's all falling into place. You know, all the jobs that have happened yeah. for me over the last few months. It's good for are me as that. a coming having come from from London and been here now two and a half years, uh, to know that it does actually if you keep working at it, it does actually break because you know, I'm making more money, making my living uh, uh, my existence out of driving for Uber than I am as an actor at the right. moment. And, and but even like telling but, me that is is like a look, that's that's like a that's a very that's a very humble and modest way to 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 be open and honest about about you know what money is versus what career is because you can actually be seemingly incredibly successful in your career in this country and make barely fucking anything that's that's a, yeah. a real fact i think that you applies know. anywhere yeah, yeah. Uh, in in the entertainment world you 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 can be well i think you you said it and uh, uh you can be Working hard and doing lots of shows and things, you can be doing lots of stand up, uh, but you're not making any money out. Not in you're LA. Not getting no, paid there's out. no money in stand up no, in LA. Jesus. No, but um, and the same same does apply for acting. You know, you can, I I've done I've been here two, two and a half years. I've done a movie, I've done a TV show, and I've done a commercial. Three really good things. Yeah, yeah. But none of them have paid enough money for me to make a make yeah, a career course, yeah, uh, yeah. and not do anything else. Um, the big money is involved in getting that fifty grand on episode TV series there for five yeah, years. Know. You know, that's where you. Yeah, maybe like, I shouldn't have turned that down, but. <laughs> but that's where you get your. Mo- that's where the money comes, and that's what we all hope to get. But you, you can, if you're good enough, and things, and you play the cards right, play it right, rather. I think you can eventually do it on on guest roles as well. If you can do one guest role, two guest roles a, a month. Yeah. That's I don't know. 10, 12 grand. I'm not quite sure, sure what sure. the rates yeah, are. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that's a, that's a good good monthly wage. And let me also make a make a point. I think that also um, the number of people in this town and, and in acting, this is, again, advice to any aspiring actors or performers mm. or anyone who, who might listen to this podcast. You, you, first of all, and let's use you as an example, you already have a body of work which proves your ability. You've, you've already proven yourself time and time again as an mm. actor who has who has uh, acting chops and who has the ability to play a, a vast array of different roles in the various TV shows and movies that you've done. Um, so the only other ingredient that has to go alongside that is keeping at it. That really is a big difference between the people who make it in this town and the people who don't. The ones who go, well, it's been a year or it's been two years or it's been five years and I'm, and I'm not a famous fucking superstar household name yet. It's like, that's right. Because for some people, it might take 10 years. For others, yeah. it might take 15. For mm. some, it might happen overnight. You might be fortunate. Like if I'd taken that Nickelodeon job a year and a half ago with the 50 grand a fucking episode and, you know, yeah. Maybe I would be already a household name that, but I might be fucking miserable because oh, I'm God, not yeah. allowed to do any of my yeah, other yeah, shit. Yeah, my yeah. stand-up would have been done. Podcast done. You know, I wouldn't be able do to... you know, um, anyway. what's the name? I don't know her name, but the girl who plays Flo in the progressive TV ads. Right. Who gets played two or three million easily per year for yeah. those ads. Yeah, yeah. She does those and goes and does that and earns the money. And then she goes off and she does her, her performances at Groundlings and, yeah, and, yeah. and stuff. And just has and does what she, she yeah. gives her the ability to do what she wants to do. And even though she's got a house and she's paid her mortgage from the commercials, I guarantee mm. if anyone asks her, like, how are you feeling about your doing in career? She'll go, oh, I still struggle, you know, I'm still trying to do. It's, yeah, yeah. And that's really what it is, is like learning, putting things into perspective, going, all right, what have I done? What have I already achieved? Where am I going? What's my ability like? Am I still developing as a performer? And then just being content to enjoy the process and the journey mm. because that's what it is. I might be, look, like, I'm 36, man. I might, it might be 40 before I get a huge role that anyone of any note that people go, yeah. oh, wow. 
he's fucking great. And that's okay. I'm, I'm happy with it now. I'm, I'm, I'm at a place like, yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. Well, that was yeah. probably about the age, I think I was 38 when I did Lockstock. There you go. So, yeah. There we go. So we're, we're, we're reconvening two years and see where we're at. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Stephen Marcus, thank you so much for coming and talking to me, mate. All I appreciate right. it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, do me a favor. Go support this wonderful actor, um, director, producer, and screenwriter. Mm. Uh, he's also got a book. Well, you've written a book, haven't you? I wrote a book about the making of Lockstock. It's kind of, kind of it's a booklet, I would say, more okay. than a book. But you can still pick it um, up online, right? Uh, you can find it on Amazon, I think. Still. What's the name of it? It is called Ava Butchers, Ava, The Making of Ava Lockstock. Butchers. Have right. a butchers. Have a butchers. Uh, and make sure to also follow him Butch. on social media, Smarticus62. Smarticus62, that's S M A R T I C U S 62 on Twitter. And the actor Stephen Marcus, at the actor Stephen Marcus on Instagram. Uh, also, if you just want to look at, over some of his movies or his TV shows, mm. you can find his all the listings on imdb.com. Just search Stephen Marcus. He's got a plethora of great shows there. And also, let me just do one more shout out to our fantastic supporters, uh, new patron James Gaps. Thank you very much for supporting the podcast. Patreon.com slash Savage Snowflake. Go and make a little donation. Uh, and also, Dan Lloyd, legend, savage, $50 patron. Thank you very much, brother. I appreciate you. Go for you. it, Dan. Um, also, thank you very much to our sponsors, CBDeeper.com. If you want to get 10% off all of the CBD vapes on there, they come in a vast range of flavors. Uh, no vitamin E, no heavy metals, no pesticides, lab tested, all of their proof. All the COA tests are available on their website as well, so you know what you're getting is clean, is pure, and has been lab tested to make sure that you are safe and secure. Uh, check them out, CBDeeper.com. Dot com and use code SAVAGE for 10% off. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much, guys. I love you. Goodbye. Goodbye.